Hello, this is Mike Swanson, and you're listening to the Wall Street Window podcast, or watching it. And the odds are you found out about this because you got an email from my email list with a link to access uh, this update. Now, if you're finding me for the very first time on YouTube, what you may want to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the YouTube bell that you'll see with the video so you'll get the next video update as soon as it's posted, notified by YouTube about it. In a few moments, I'm going to be speaking with David Skarika, who runs the website addictedtoprofits.net. We're going to talk about what's going on in the gold market because today we're seeing a tremendous uh, rally in the price of gold. Uh, gold, in fact, has been outperforming the U.S. stock market averages since October of 2018. That means gold has gone up more than the stock market and has fallen less than the stock market when the stock market has had its own drops, which we saw happen this last March. When the S&P 500 fell over 30%, the price of gold fell around 10% and then exploded to new 52-week highs well before the NASDAQ did and the S&P 500 has yet to do so. And uh, big cap mining stocks completely exploded. And it's been an exciting setup. However, in May, uh, gold, uh, silver, and the mining stocks kind of lost some momentum, went sideways, and then last week they started to turn up. Uh, so what's interesting about this moment is that uh, seasonally, historically, gold has its best months from July to October. And we are just now starting the first trading day of summer this Monday as I make this video. So is today's move the start of the epic summer rally that almost always comes with gold and mining stocks? That's a question I talked about with David Skarika, who runs the website addictedtoprofits.net. One quick commercial break here, and then we'll be talking with Dave. Carmine Savastano, human time bomb, the violence within our nature, poses significant questions and considers the evidence that violence shapes the past and present. Author and professor David T. Beato calls it an impressive tour de force. Savastano shows a mastery of relevant work in biology, anthropology, and intelligence. Each chapter will challenge readers to rethink old assumptions. Doctor of Psychology R. Blackstock notes, It is a long, hard look into the potency of our collective shadow that is extremely relevant in today's socio-political climate. Historian and author Larry Hancock declares, This work is a slap on the back of the head, a wake-up call, and a serious reality check as to the true human condition. Order your digital and print copies now on Amazon.com. For more information, visit tpaak.com. Well, how you doing today, Dave? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Well, it's a big day for gold. Gold's up $15 as we're speaking noon on uh, Monday, June the 22nd. Uh, it's at 1759 at the moment. Uh, but seasonally, uh, gold tends to actually do very well uh, from July uh, through uh, October. It's actually the best couple months of the year going back to 1994, the seasonal data. I just went and checked it before talking. Uh, so it could be lining up for that again. What do you think? Yeah, usually what happens in the gold market is you kind of peak in April or May, and then you fall into about this time frame, the end of June or July. And by the way, even in horrible years for gold, if you look at, for example, like 2013, when everything kind of crashed in the spring, um, yeah, it bottomed in late June and had a nice little bounce that summer. So, yeah, it does look like, you know, and, and we haven't really seen any weakness. We've kind of just seen this consolidation. So, yeah, I think everything does kind of look uh, to, to line up here for maybe a breakout. And if you go look, at, we're still close now to those 2011 all-time highs. You would think that if you broke out through about 1775 is, is the high of this last rally. If you go through that, um, you would think that you're going to go straight up to maybe that 1900 area. You know, on the old highs, then that will represent maybe some resistance. And 
maybe in that time frame you're talking about, you know, like in October where um, after that seasonal strength in the summer, gold tends to pull back in September, October, maybe into November, then rallying to the end of the year. Maybe we'll see that, you know, kind of happen then and then uh, a final rally that will break out to new all time highs. But it looks good. You know, the stocks have acted well. You know, they've lagged a bit recently, but it, you can't take one or two weeks of the state stocks lagging as some kind of sell signal that happens all the time. And uh, what we're seeing is, you know, with us doing a lot in junior miners, I am seeing for the first time in a while, maybe since that first half of 2016, really good strength in these junior mining companies. You know, little, the little five, 10 cent companies that have ounces in the ground, you know, rallying to 20 cents, 30 cents, et cetera. So I think that's also a positive sign. And then I, I kind of believe, you know, it's tough to fight, <laughs> fight the trend of the stock market right now, but I do believe that the stock market in the second half of the year, most likely the fall and winter, will have a, a difficult time when this kind of V-shaped recovery does not occur and when, and um, for, for other factors as well. And um, that also could give a bid to gold because there'll be a flight to quality, you know, when that happens. Well, I guess then you wouldn't buy the argument that, you know, people shouldn't buy gold and they should just buy Apple and other stocks because the stock market's going to go up. I have no problem. Like, I don't want to be one of these extreme bear market types, you know, and perma bears and, and, and saying that, like, you know, I own a little bit of some, actually, I'm thinking the two positions just right off the top of my head that are like, you know, basically stock market, I guess you could say positions, positions that are probably going to go up if the S&P continues to go up and not do well if the S&P goes down. But again, it's just two smaller positions in my portfolio. But I don't know if you like some kind of company, like I wouldn't be chasing those FANG stocks because they're so expensive and such a huge part of a percentage of the, the market in terms of you know them being a percent of the S&P 500. I think those top five companies are as big as the index that have ever been. Uh, as I say any top five companies have ever been, even more than when those big tech, tech companies in 2000 represented a, a good portion of the S&P. So they are so expensive, I wouldn't chase them, but I don't know, there's some little tech deal you like or or some small or whatever, some you know, uh, uh, company you like for whatever reason. I don't think there's area oil and gas company because I do think maybe those, those stocks will have one more leg lower into the fall. But if you want to own something here just in case the bottom did happen a few months ago, yeah, I, I have no problem with that. But yeah, I, I think also, the, I think one thing that's being ignored by maybe the Robin Hood traders or the whatnot or the retail guys is the, the gold and precious metal stocks should be a percent of your portfolio as well, especially with them doing well, especially with the huge debts that are being rung up, especially all the money printing that's going on, uh, you know, how weak the economy is going to be for years. Um, I think that's the kind of thing that you, know, you want to be in the precious metal stocks. And, and really what's amazing is You've got this great setup. Like it's even better than 2007 or, or 2000 or 2008 because you've got this setup in the precious metal stocks where to me it's really obvious that, you know, what, what's going to happen in terms of the money printing the deficits and the economy, you know, the economy is weaker than even in 2008 now. Um, and, and you can see what's going to happen, but you don't have these crazy valuations in gold and precious metal stocks. You can actually get in at a pretty good level. You know, I guess like the, the second best setup I've seen in the last 20 years that I've been doing this was the early 2000s when you could see the Iraq war and that was going to blow up the deficits and and uh, you, the economy was going to uh, needed all that cheap money to come back from the dot com bubble. And gold did fantastically from 2002 to 2000 or excuse, from 2000 to 2007 um, and really to 2011. And, and I think now you're kind of seeing the same thing. And remember, another factor no one's taking into account is. They think, okay, in 2008, the Fed bailed everybody out, and then they had this great, you know, 11, 12 year uh, bull market. But remember, all the, the that cheap money went into financial engineering, you know, companies borrowing to do bu stock buybacks, et cetera, et cetera, M and A. That's dead, right? They, now, no one's doing buybacks, even though the companies companies are just borrowing now to stay alive, and and the, the buyback thing is dead. We all know because of that blew up in the face of so many companies, uh, you know, like you know, like the cruise ships like the airlines, et cetera, um, there's, gonna, there's a big, big negative backlash against all of that right now. So um, um, that's another thing, too, is that it wasn't just, oh, the Fed printed money and the market went up. No, it was that money being printed 
and being borrowed was used for financial engineering, which drove the prices of stocks up. And we're not really going to see that uh, in the coming years. Like, OK, you can get people with momentum money pushing stocks up, you know, for whatever, three, six months. But you're not going to see that 10 years of that buyback bonanza go on. And actually, I think because of the borrowing spree that has gone on during this downturn, and usually companies actually, uh, you know, use less debt in the downturn. But now they're doing it to stay alive because the Fed is giving them all this uh, easy, cheap money. Um, I think that borrowing spree means more likely that when things, even if they do somewhat return to normal, the companies are going to use the, the whatever cash flow they have to actually pay down this kind of debt they did just to kind of as an, almost an emergency plan. You know, so I think people are ignoring that kind of aspect of, of the market longer term, you know. Well, the way I think of things at the moment is the bullish argument for the market. The best bullish more argument is, look. The economy might not be great, um, and it might not be ready to really boom for years starting now, but the Fed's printing money, and that helps stocks go up, and therefore believe in it. Well, if that yeah. argument is correct, gold's going to benefit even more than stocks. And if the argument's wrong, the Fed's just going to print more money anyway, and gold will go up. So at the moment, that's the way I think is gold still remains the best bet to make. And we got the seasonal factors in play. Yeah, yeah. And I look, look. Um, uh, and the thing is, too, is you know when we're talking about them printing money, you know, I'm looking for maybe stocks uh, going down the second half of this year. But let's say the stock market does hold up for a year or two. I think it would be the opposite of say what happened in 2008. Remember what happened then is the gold stocks had this V bottom that was a huge crash, kind of like the stock market did in March. And then and then what happened was gold stocks went up for like about three years and then they kind of petered out and rolled over. And then the rest of the market kind of went higher. Well, now I think it would be the opposite that, OK, maybe all this money they're printing and all this liquidity and all this cheap money helps prop up the market for two or three years. But then after that, the stock market kind of peters out because it doesn't have all those stock buybacks and all that money coming into it and companies begin to pay off debt. And then, and then the gold stocks, because of all the debt issues and economic issues, they go crazy, you know, for the next 10 years, just like, so I, I, like, that's what I'm saying. Even if the market does go up, you know, um, I think the gold stuff has a longer uh, upside and, and, um, and the whatnot. And remember gold, if it, when it breaks that through the, um, the all time high in 2011, you know, we're talking about an all-time high that was made nine years ago, right? Stock market just made it high in February. So we're talking that gold has a much longer base, bottoming power, et cetera, et cetera. I guess, I guess the, the analogy would be like, again, buying gold in 01, 02 was a lot better than buying the S&P. Okay, the S&P rallied for a few years, but 10 years later, you did way better in gold because gold was coming out of this kind of long-term base, just like it's doing now again. And, and, you know, and the stock market was still at a pretty high long-term valuation. Now, just so you know, with all this QE and money printing and and um, low rates, zero rates, yeah, that you can put a higher multiple on the S&P. But let's say you even put a, a multiple of, I don't know, the S&P I think is going to make between $100 and $120 this year because of, you know, slow down in the economy. Well, even if you put a 20x multiple on that, you're talking 2000 to 2400 on the S&P which is, you know, like I'm using 20 as a high multiple because of all those low rates and the whatnot. Well, you're still talking that's a 20, 25, 30% drop from where we are today. So I, I just think that that, that and uh, that's going to have to happen. One thing that no one's taking into account because the Robinhood traders and momentum guys don't think long-term at all, and I'm not getting political here, but the, if the Democrats win, you know, all three uh, um, aspects of the government, um, they are going to roll back some of those corporate tax cuts and the studies have shown that that might cut the S&P earnings, uh, which are estimated to be 170 next year, down to 140, you know, 130, or maybe 150 at best. So again, that, that also uh, cuts into the earnings for next year, which you stock, just like stock prices ran up when the tax cuts happened, because they could have a bigger multiple, sorry, they could have the same multiple um, uh, on the same amount of revenues because the earnings were higher because they had to pay less taxes. The opposite is going to should run true, you know, if if, if those um, increases come as well. So people aren't looking at those kind of factors and that not right now. It's just like, look, at I had a guy from Barstool here. We did a bunch of articles 
there's articles I've videos around the island. It was a lot of fun, but it's kind of like, and I, and, and, you know, this Dave, you know, the guy who's his boss, the CEO, he's on, you know, doing his day trading thing and just, you know, saying, oh, stocks do nothing but go up and blah, blah, blah. And with him, it's more of a shtick, in my opinion. But it's like, that's kind of where that mentality is right now. And it's a, not a long-term thinking mentality. It's just kind of like, oh, we had a crash and everything's fine again. And not really looking at these, that, that these um, issues going forward. And who knows? I could be wrong because anyone who had any rationality or knew anything about historical valuations was wrong from about 2015 to 2020 because nothing, none of that mattered. So does none of that matter again? I don't know. I just know that in this, the difference between that, this and that time frame is like 2008 or like 2000, the gold and precious metal stocks look like they're leading the way. And as, and as I have a lot of contacts and know a lot of people and, and know that industry very well, I'd much rather be there right now because I think there's much more upside. Well, the first time I bought a gold stock was in 2001. No, I'm sorry. It was 2002. Um, and I actually met you in 2002 because in 2002, what happened was uh, another friend of mine uh, told me, you got to look at this gold stuff. It's coming out of a base. It's starting a new bull market. So I went to find experts who I could learn from about that sector. And that's how I got to know you, really. And at the time, many of these small cap mining stocks had very tiny market caps. And in that bull market cycle, almost every single one of them got to a market cap of $25 million. And the same thing happened after 2008. That sector crashed, and then within like two years, almost every small cap stock in it had a market cap of $25 million. And now we're still at a point where most of them have market caps of less than $10 million, some less than five, even a few less than three. So just based on that, that makes me think there's still huge opportunity for upside in the right small cap mining stocks uh, to get in here, that the valuations still remain cheap, maybe even cheaper than ever with gold at the level it's at. So with that in mind, uh, what's one or two small cap miners you like now? Well, okay, just to go to add on to that is when I got involved in the markets, it was actually – when I was in 1995, when I was 18, and I was reading all these like Doug Casey books and James Davidson and Harry Figgy's bankruptcy 1995 books like this, they were all kind of doom and gloom books. And they're all, you know, basically kind of gold bug type books because of that doom and gloom aspect to it. So I got really interested in gold and precious metals, learning about Austrian economics, learning about how this debt fueled system was probably going to fail at some point. Right. So anyhow, um, um, uh, so, so, so anyhow, um, so I got involved then. What I was going to say it. So I started doing these junior mining stocks, and I made all this money for a year at eighteen, nineteen, and thought I was a genius. And then Brex happened, and they all crashed, and I lost about you know, half of the profit that I made, which is pretty good for you know your first round in the market. And back then, I had these stocks, Arizona Star, which was one that got taken over. It went from like a dollar to eight dollars. I had one called Corriente, which uh, was twenty dollars, a copper mine. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is. Like you're saying, that low prices is an example of why we're still probably near a bottom. You know, these companies with whatever, you know, one, two, five million dollar market caps that actually have ounces in the ground or near production, et cetera. And back in 1996, when Brex was booming and that sector was booming, you know, these stocks are trading at $10, $20, right? So that in itself is a signal of a bottom is how cheap they are. So two that I like, um, and these are companies, uh, just as full disclosure, um, uh, they, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I help them raise money and the whatnot. So, um, is one that's raising money right now is called Vendetta VTT. Uh, they have a base metal property in Australia. They're looking at a few other things as well. They're doing a four cent financing with a six cent, a six cent, uh, full warrant, uh, should be closing this week. Uh, Mike and I have both participated in this financing, um, and, um, yeah, the, the full warrant is fantastic. And like the stock's at five, five and a half cents. So you're already up 20, um, 30%, you know, on, on that four cent price, uh, just to start. Right. So, um, that's one, uh, I, I really like a lot. And, and the other one and is full metal minerals. It's halted right now, but they should be doing a financing shortly. 
And what I love about Full Metal is it's got this great share structure with only 6 million shares um, outstanding. And they're going to be raising, uh, it will still probably be around 20 million even after the raise. And um, that's, that's really tight. And I think, you know, when I mean, after, they'll use that money to take over some kind of project and that could really cause the stock to move. And you're kind of getting in on the bottom floor, right? If you're getting in then after that raise, there's going to be 20 million shares out. At eight, eight cents, you're talking about buying the stock at a $1.6 million valuation and they'll have 1.2 million cash um, in the bank. So these are the kind of things I'm looking at. And again, I know the management. Uh, both these companies are the same management, uh, Mike Williams, that uh, of Aftermath Silver that Mike and I and our subscribers did pretty well in. We bought eight cent financing. The stock's about 32 this morning. So these are the kind of things I'm really looking at. And um, yeah, that's, that's that that that's just two of them, and I think we'll have a couple others over the summer as well. And I have a bunch on my list that I'm just holding, uh, stuff like Euro Sun Mining and and African Gold. I, I you know I have positions in those, and uh, just kind of I, I averaged down on those when the market tanked in March, and now I'm just kind of holding those. So yeah, and, and by the way, again, all of these companies that I'm talking about have stuff that's you know near production resources, etc. Like they're pretty as for juniors, pretty developed. They're not just these early stage stories with early stage drilling and the whatnot. So that's kind of, I think, where the advantage where us come in, uh, where we come in, is everyone wants to use their Robinhood apps and get information for free. But if, um, you, know, you, know, you know, if you get into these deals, I'm, I'm kind of sorting out uh, through stuff I like and don't like. And, you know, I talk to other letter writers and other analysts and other people I know, et cetera. Yeah. So well, you also have a pay service too, and I'll provide a link for that. For yeah. To sign up, and they can really get involved in, in what you're doing. Even yeah, yeah. Them. And like I said, for people that are accredited or, or have like a, a good net worth that are interested in these private placements, you the the pay service gives you first access to them. Because right now, I still do blast it out to the free list, but I just think that you know I'm I'm being able to raise more and more because there's more interest in these things. At some point, I won't need to blast the free list. It will just be these things will just be offered to paying subscribers. So, um, you know, and just so uh, people know, Mike and I um, put our money in these things. Uh, uh, we do have a marketing platform we use for some of the companies, right? So we get like, like, like a, I, I sell a corporate subscription where I do the podcast and stuff. So some of, them, but we kind of choose those companies we like in that regard. We're not, um, you know, we're not getting pitched by them. Right. So and we only take a few companies doing that. But anyhow, um, yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of juniors I own those on the market in private placements, et cetera. And I've just been long. Like, this is the time to really get in like um, in them, you know, and the, and the good thing, again, about that kind of sell off that happened earlier in the year. Most of the juniors have maybe rebounded to back to where they were then or the whatnot. And, and you got gold, you know, at 1760, 1770. And. And a lot of these juniors aren't reflecting that because of what happened, you know, that sell off that happened. So I think they'll continue to go higher. And then also we talk about the Robinhood charities. I think one thing that's really going to happen in the junior mining sector is if you go look at like, like volatile sectors, like the st stocks, these people are chasing, uh, maybe some of the biotechs that say they have a vaccine, the, you know, the, the marijuana stocks a year or two ago, crypto a year or two, a few years ago, the same type of people that were attracted to those volatile sectors are going to be attracted to junior mining. So I really think that once, if there is this rollover in the stock market and gold and silver are kind of the only game in town, you're going to see a lot of that money from the kind of Robin Hood momentum types coming into junior mining. And these stocks have extremely small market caps. So they'll be able to really move uh, with any kind of good news or buying interest, et cetera. Yeah, it's really the way to get ahead of the crowd before they even get into the door. You know, the marijuana stocks are kind of a perfect example, I think, of what you're talking about because a lot of smaller traders were heavily involved in that sector and did very well in it. Uh, but there, those people, you know, kind of had moved on to other plays, uh, judging by what you see on the Robinhood list, and they should eventually get into these mining stocks, as you say. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I know you, we've been talking for quite some time. I don't want to take your whole day up. So, um, like yeah, I said, thanks for having me. And, and, and just so you know, with my list, I'm, I got to be honest about something here. I'm, I'm still editing and finishing my new book uh, from now to the end of the month. That's only about another eight days. 
So I haven't put out as many updates as I would like to because I really just got to get this book out. I have a deadline, et cetera. So hopefully when I'm done that in July, I'll really be pumping out a ton of material, a ton of content to make up for the fact that, you know, the last month or so I have been, you know, I have been, been, this book has kind of weighed me down a bit. So, and I'm, I think I'm going to have two to three new deals, including Full Metal, Vendetta, and another one, you know, between now, actually two more, I think, and another one, um, um, it's actually not a gold deal, but it's a tech deal I really like, uh, between now and the, and the end of July, you know, so. Well, great. You know. So people listen, if they want to get in touch with you, your website's addictedtoprofits.net. Uh, I'll provide a link to get the pay service. And also, if they want to email you, it's addicted to profits uh, at hotmail.com. Uh, yep, yep. And, and uh, thanks for having me on. We'll talk again uh, more going forward. You know? Great. Thank you.